Hello and welcome back, my name is Clore and I'm the artist behind the channel. This is the third narrated paint over I'm making for this channel, so for newcomers here's a quick reminder of how it works. You send me your artwork and I spend one hour reviewing it and painting over it for a small fee. This way you get pointers on what to improve and how to get better to continue your art journey. All the info is being displayed on the screen right now, so check it out if you're curious. And to participate, just send me an email at artofclore at gmail.com with your artwork attached. Nothing simpler. Today we are painting over an artwork by Lens Diestro Art on Instagram. It's a cute cartoony dino in what appears to be a shop. So lots of pastel colors and a really fun and feel-good artwork overall, I really like it. Uh, this review, however, is a bit different because the artist also sent me the video spit paint of their work and let me include it in the video, so thanks for that. And this way we can look at their painting process before we dive into the paint over itself. So first thing I see is that they are quite good with perspective and they took the time to apply guidelines and decide on vanishing points to build the sketch accordingly, so that's great. The palette they chose is also pretty cohesive with pastel tones that mix well together to go along their rather minimalist style. And the background is kept to a minimum of detail but it all works well with the main subject. The main issues the artist seems to face right now are texturing and shading. Uh, in their words, I want to make it look more interesting, I'm struggling with textures and I guess it's hard for me to make the head the focal point without sacrificing the details on other parts of the painting. So the massive use of the soft brush forces them to blend the shapes together more than necessary and in turn everything looks a bit blurry so to say. The texturing with just a few dots of white here and there is also something they want to work on so I'll try to break it down into simple steps in this video. This is something I really like to do so I'm actually excited for this part of the video. As usual the first step is to check the values. As we can see, the artwork is really pale with very few areas of darker grey or black. Normally I would advise to add more contrast, but the artist's style is really pastel coloured and pale overall, so I'll try to keep this vibe and level of contrast intact. All in all, the dinosaur really pops out in front of the background and there is no major issue with the focal point which is what we want. My first real tweak is to make the canvas taller, so I'm adding a good 500 pixels at the bottom to give more space to the dino's legs and center him on the image. Cropping too high or onto the character's limbs can really distract the viewer and make the artwork uneasy on the eye, less balanced, as if the rest of the dino was an afterthought that wasn't planned to begin with. So by giving it more room, you let the picture breathe, so to speak, and it's more appealing to the viewer. Now that we've reframed it, we can focus on the artwork's main subject. As I mentioned in the intro, the main deal here is that lots of details look really blurry and smudged together, so the teeth, for instance, the limbs, the scales on the back and the tail, I think it's mainly due to the artist's reliance on the soft brush and since that brush's main purpose is to seamlessly blend in with any underlying color, it doesn't create hard edges. So the different forms and shapes lack any sort of definition. If you want things to pop out, you really need to have clear and well-defined edges that allow us to see where one thing ends and where the next one begins else it looks all dull and faded. To solve this issue, I'm taking a regular round brush and working to slowly refine the shapes. The brush I'm using is actually really nice because it has a pressure sensitive opacity so I can blend seamlessly with other colors like I would with a soft brush by pressing softly and at the same time refine shapes with harsh contours as well by pressing harder so I don't have to keep switching between different brushes, which is enjoyable. 
to refine the shapes I just build up the contours and try to simplify the shading to just a few shades. We try to return to simple forms that are easy to recognize using the light source as a guide. So for instance, the side of the head is going to be all dark orange, the front of the muzzle is going to be all bright orange red. So all lit up areas are going to be the same shade of bright orange and all the dark areas are going to be the same shade of dark orange red. With a few variations in between of course, but with minimal difficulty. I get rid of all intense spots of light for now because they are distracting us while we work on the bigger shapes. Once we're done with this step, we'll be able to work in smaller details as well as color variations more easily. I'm also making the limbs further away from us a bit bigger as I thought the proportions were a bit screwed here. And then we do the same thing for the belly area but with the yellowish color instead of the orange. And then again with the spikes on the dino's back and tail. As you can see the dinosaur is already much more impactful thanks to the hard edges. Once we're done, we can do the same work on the background. I want to make the walls a bit straighter, less free-handed, so to do that I use the same technique, but combine with the polygon selection tool to make sure the edges are as straight as they should be. Regarding the desert scenery outside, I am painting it slightly brighter around the horizon to enhance the impression of distance. The further away something is, and the less saturated and contrasted it is going to be. So, considering the bright light outside, I am making that area paler by adding a bit of white to the mix of yellow and blue. I'm also tweaking the shading of the room a tiny bit. I noticed the artist took into account the door opening and left it in the light, but didn't really mark the shadow cast by the window frame, so I'm going to add it behind the dino's feet, or at least hint at it to make the room's ambience more coherent. I'm also darkening the ceiling a little bit to give more of a contained vibe to the room, as if it was really dark compared to the outside, uh, well, despite the use of the pastel palette. It should enhance the difference in mood with the blue interior and the yellow exterior that was present in the original artwork. Also adding the fancy tie back in since we're done with the dino's main features, can't afford to forget that! Now, remember what I said about cropping things too close to big details and how it made the viewer uncomfortable? This applies to the main subject of the artwork, so here to the dino. For environment features and smaller items surrounding the main focus, it can be nice to actually let them continue out of frame to show that the scenery feels bigger than it actually is on the canvas. Take this open sign for instance. By moving it halfway out of frame, 
I'm implying that the door is way bigger than what's actually visible on screen and that it continues past the crop of the artwork. It helps make the environment more encompassing and bigger as if the camera was inside the environment as well. And considering that type of sign is so well known, you don't need to see the entire word to know what's written on it, so it's not a big deal if half of it is not visible anymore. Now for the texturing itself, I noticed the open sign looked like it was hanging onto nothing floating mid-air with no door to be stuck onto. That's because the texture of the glass door is missing, so let's add it back. What I'm doing is simply covering the area in diagonals of white and grey shades with a few variations in hues using blue and yellow since they're found in the environment as well. I'm basically creating the reflections that would occur on the glass under the sunlight in a simplified style to fit in with the rest of the artwork. And then once I'm done, I'm echoing those lines onto the floor as passing through the glass would distort the light that lands there. So that's it, and I also do the same thing but more subtly on the window and floor behind the dino. Finally, we can add the scales onto Dino's body. Since we build a nice volume already when we simplify the shapes, our job here is going to be a lot easier. What I'm doing is taking my round brush and choosing a shade that's a bit brighter than the base shades, or brighter than the bright orange, to draw circles across the Dino's body. I'm also making sure to follow along the shape's volume, so if the muzzle is curving, for instance, which it is, the circles are going to be placed following that curve. And I do that all over the lit-up areas where the light is the strongest. That's because light underlines texture more than shadows, so small details tend to be less visible in shaded areas because there is less contrast to expose them. Following this principle, I just draw circles, varying shape and size slightly to make it look more natural. We also do the same for the belly, but instead of orange dots, we're drawing yellowish lines across it. Again, same thing, just in the lit up area. As they get closer to the shaded area, they disappear. After that, I take an even brighter shade of orange and highlight the side of each circle that's under direct light. This simple technique creates a lot of volume and is rather easy to use. With just a round brush and a few shades, you can make really nice and detailed textures that build upon the simple style of the artwork. It works better than just dotting the skin in white because you can build up a progression in the texture from subtle, almost invisible circles to really contrasted ones in the brighter areas. So it all looks a lot more 3D and controlled like this. Some textures will also have a brighter highlight than others depending on how reflective they are and how close and strong the light is, but the principle is the same no matter the texture. If you want to draw fur, you start with bigger strands and then highlight some of them with thinner lines of a brighter color. If you want to paint the spikes on the dino's back, you highlight one side in a mid-tone of grey and then you apply a brighter highlight in just one area. The key is to keep the texture adapted to the shape you're painting it on and to make sure it follows the logic of the image's light source. You can get pretty creative with them too.
Now that we're done with everything, we can do slight adjustments to the light and shadow using an overlay layer to darken some areas if necessary and lighten up some others. I'm also using the color balance menu to control the different hues of each level, shadows, midtones and highlights, and enhance the contrast between the outside world, which is very bright and yellow, and the room, which is very dark and blue. By adding more blue hues to the shadows, for instance, we also tweak the shadow's hue on the dino, which means he'll appear inside the environment, affected by the surrounding light more than glued on top. That's also another small tweak you can do to make sure the entire artwork looks coherent. And same thing with the light, by adding more yellow overall, we're also impacting the light areas of the dino to be more yellow as well, creating the same effect. Finally, I'm making a few last minute changes to the side of the dino as I forgot to factor in the shadow of the pillar between the window and the door. And that's it, we are done! Et voilà! Thanks to Lens Gestro Art for submitting this really nice artwork and for allowing me to use their recording at the beginning of the video. I tried my best to explain how to refine your shapes and add hints of texture to your artwork, so I hope it's going to help you improve and grow as an artist. This was a bit of a challenge for me to work with such pastel colors as I'm a big lover of super contrasted and overall darker artworks, so I hope my rendition wasn't too much of a betrayal of your style. I really think you've got strong bases on which to expand, so keep the art coming! And as always, I am on the lookout for art to paint over, so if you want to have your artwork reviewed as well, please send me an email at artofclore at gmail.com. All the info can be found in the description box below. Thanks for watching and see you next time!